Welcome to Binge Finance. Subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with the latest growth stocks which have pulled back. In this video, I want to look at the first pure play quantum computing stock, which hit the market recently as a SPAC merger. The good news is the stock price has now pulled back after the initial excitement. So we're going to take a closer look at this company and ask, is quantum computing hype or is it the next big thing? But first, I'm just a YouTuber, I could miss something important, so please do your own due diligence. Stocks that have pulled back can continue to go down, so never risk too much in any one stock. Okay, the ticker symbol is DMYI. This is a SPAC which merged with IonQ. IonQ is the first publicly traded pure play quantum computing company and has some big name investors, including Google, Amazon, Lockheed Martin, HP, Airbus, and Samsung. They're seeking to build the world's best quantum computers to solve the world's most complex problems, transforming business, society and the planet for the better, according to the presentation. So very briefly, what is a quantum computer? Well, classical computers, like you and I have, are manipulating ones and zeros to crunch through operations. Um, whereas a quantum computer uses quantum bits or qubits. Just like a classical computer, quantum computers use ones and zeros, but qubits have a third state called a superposition that allows them to represent a one and a zero or any combination at the same time. Now, before I go on, I just want to really illustrate how fast these computers are. Sycamore is a quantum processor created by Google's artificial intelligence division. It comprises 53 qubits. In 2019, Sycamore completed a task in 200 seconds that Google claimed would take a state-of-the-art supercomputer 10,000 years to finish. So Google's quantum computer did it in 200 seconds. IonQ claimed to have quantum computers far superior to any of their competitors. That puts it into perspective. So Google's supercomputer is 158 million times faster than the world's fastest supercomputer. You think that's a lot? China has demonstrated quantum computing at 100 trillion times faster than any classical supercomputer. It kind of is a scary thought. Elon Musk has said that AI is the biggest threat to humanity. And I sometimes wonder, uh, classical computers have advanced so much with the invent of neural networks, a way for computers to process information in a much more almost human-like way. What would happen if they combined quantum computers with neural networks? I mean, you would have essentially a brain that's magnitudes faster than any living organism. Anyway, I won't go down the path of talking about the Terminator just yet. IonQ believes that the 21st century will be defined by quantum computing. Problems like how to live sustainably on our planet, how to cure diseases, and how to effectively move people or goods are problems listed for quantum computers. Um, what I love about this company is they're putting their computer technology in the cloud for other people to use. Uh, they are available on Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. Let's just look at a bit of history of the company. They say over the last 25 years of research, IonQ was founded in 2015 by Chris Monroe and Jung Sang Kim with $2 million in seed funding. They had a goal of taking trapped ion quantum computing out of the lab and into the market. In the following three years, we raised an additional 20 million from GV, Amazon Web Services and NIA and built two of the world's most accurate quantum computers. In 2019, we raised another 55 million and announced partnerships with Microsoft and Amazon Web Services to make our quantum computers available via the cloud. So this is exciting because we've all known about quantum computers for a very long time, but it's you know, we, we picture these scientists in this room twiddling with things that aren't really interacting with the real world. Now, for the first time, we've got a company that is interacting with the real world and it's publicly tradable and they say is scalable. We'll come back to this because this is the big question if they can scale. As for the financials, the company is forecasting revenue of 5 million in fiscal 2021 and 15 million in 2022. Then they say they'll see a ramp up of revenue beginning in fiscal 2025 with an estimate of 237 million. I never know how these companies do estimates. It's a bit like on Dragon's Den or in America Shark Tank, where they say, what are you, what are your earnings gonna be over the next five years? Um, how do they know? But anyway, they're, they're projecting unbelievable growth. That revenue forecast is 
projected to compound at 150% a year from 2021 to 2025. And the company is forecasting positive EBITDA in fiscal 2025. By the way, as a side note, uh, if you don't know what EBITDA is, it stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation and Amortization. And EBITDA margins provide investors a kind of snapshot of uh, their efficiency. So this is obviously very exciting technology, but is it too early? The problem with quantum computers is that for them to become commercially useful, you need to be able to bring a large number of qubits into controllable quantum states. And that's really, really difficult. Estimates say the number we need to reach is roughly a million. Details depend on the quality of qubits and the problem you're trying to solve. The status of research is presently at about 50 qubits. Yes, that's a good start. But it's a long way to go to a million and there's no reason to expect anything resembling Moore's law will help us here because we're already working on the limit. So the major question for quantum computing is not does it work? We know it works. The question is, will it scale? To me, the situation for quantum computing today looks similar to the situation for nuclear fusion 50 years ago. 50 years ago, physicists understood how nuclear fusion works just fine, and they had experimentally checked that their theories were correct. The problem was just to make the technology large and still efficient enough to actually be useful. And as you all know, that's still the problem today. Now, ARK investors published their Big Ideas report for 2021, which is a stunning 112 page report highlighting the latest developments in innovation and it offers some of their most provocative research conclusions for the year. And they say that deep learning could be the most important software breakthrough of our time, potentially creating more economic value than the internet did. They also note that deep learning requires boundless computer power. Now, deep learning, if we look at this chart here, ARK Invest have 14 sectors that they think are going to be extremely high growth uh, over the coming years. The image illustrates how they see AI at the center of almost all disruptive technologies. But it could be considered that quantum computers belong at the center, potentially powering the future of AI, which in turn powers all these other sectors. I've just realized we haven't looked at the chart. It's very rare I get this far into a video without talking about the, the price action. And I did wait for this one to pull back. People were talking about this stock a month ago, but um, we now have a really significant pullback. Saw this huge rally uh, at the end of February, and then it's just petered out and potentially bottomed. So this could be a good entry point. It's kind of where it came to market, even below. So. Uh, you can't say I don't bring good uh, pullbacks to you. <laughs> but the question is, is this too early? You know, this technology is bound to become profound in our society, but when? The problem with revolutions of any kind, especially technological, they tend to take longer to mature than you might first think. I'll leave this video with a pretty balanced quote from The Motley Fool. They say, for now, I'm happy with my exposure to, quantum, to the quantum realm via my investments in Alphabet and IBM. But IonQ's progress is worth monitoring if quantum computing can start gaining traction in the coming years. So you might want to sit back and watch this one or take a speculative bet early on. So what do you guys think? Is it time to invest in quantum computing? Let us know in the comments and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.